can also use today. Good morning again. Um, my name is, again is Christy Cardinal. My pronouns are they, them. I appreciate, Jack, that you read my Facebook bio. You know, we write those things and we never know if anybody's looking at them. Um, the gender chaos, um, you know, identifying as gender chaotic. Uh, I just, you know, want to be clear that when I, that it's not gender neutral. Gender is not neutral. Um, it is in fact chaotic and it's chaotic for me. And I think today we're also experiencing a little bit of accent chaos um, with your, uh, with many New Jersey accents, which I know you don't hear your own accent, of course, but I'm going to bring my Midwestern twang to all of you today and we'll have uh, that little bit of accent chaos also. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I am a child of God. So I'm going to use some God language today and I invite you to translate into translate that into what works for you and in your practices. If that is God, great. You don't have to translate if it's spirit, if it's universe, if it's um, mystery, what, whatever that term is, please feel free to, to translate that um, for your own sake. There's a lot going on right now, a lot politically, a lot nationally, a lot personally for some of us. There's also a lot of hatred being written into case law. We are actually and have been for a while in a quagmire of rising fascism in the United States. So I've decided that our birthday is canceled this year uh, due to supply chain issues. We're out of independence to celebrate this year. Instead, let's talk about hope and love and pride and maybe a little bit of God and some Unitarian Universalist history. Pride Month, which just ended, honors the Stonewall Uprising, which was a riot at the Stonewall Inn on Christopher Street in New York City in 1969. The police raided the bar and the sex workers, trans women, butch dykes, and other so-called sexual deviants who frequented that bar, some of them unhoused and living in the park across the street, chose to fight back. And Dr. Martin Luther King, right, told us that a riot is the language of the unheard. And Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, Stormy DeLavari, and many others were tired of being unheard on that very hot night in 1969. So in addition to my gender chaos and my organic intellectualism, I'm a queer theologian. Of course, uh, right away, that means that I'm a queer human being who is also a theologian, such as it is. But it also means that my theology specifically is queer. My fellow queer theologian, though more famous and more published, Claudia Shippert, defines queer as not about identity, but about opposition to dominant ideas about sex and gender and how gender theorists define queer as being outside the norm and generally resistant to the status quo. By this definition, Unitarian Universalism is inherently a queer faith. More on that in a little bit. During this pandemic, I've often reflected on the AIDS pandemic and how queers survived by building community. The love that queers showed for each other during the AIDS crisis was nothing new, really. That love and care had been present for decades. It was the love that kept us safer when our bars were raided. It was the love that gave us clever secrets to share with each other so we could know who our community was. And it remains the love that dares to speak its name when the risk of doing so is a matter of life and death. To be visibly queer is to choose one's happiness over safety. And I share that with very real personal example of earlier this week, I, I was out of town, hence I got COVID on an airplane. Um, and while I was away, the pride flag that flies on the front of my house was violently ripped down. Um, and the, you know, the flagpole completely bent in half, the flag, nothing but scraps. 
To be visibly queer is to choose one's happiness over safety. But it is communal love that made surviving possible during the AIDS epidemic. It is that communal love that built the foundation for all the other ways we've survived. Love is the answer, no matter the question. That is my theology, that love is the answer, no matter the question. If anyone asks you who I am, tell them I am a child of God. When I was 17, which feels like last week, some days, and a million years ago on others, my mother asked me if I was gay. She didn't ask in a loving or even reassuring way. She asked as an accusation. She asked in the same tone she had used when she asked me if I was on drugs a few months prior because I was going through some teenage individuation a way that conveyed mental hand wringing and fist shaking at the sky. She asked me in the way that told me there was only one reasonable answer. And that was obviously no. I answered her in a methinks the lady doth protest too much sort of way, hollering no and storming out of the room. I suppose the drama should have been a clue. Truth was, I at that time, at 17, I had no idea if I was anything other than weird. My mom, in her accusation, had given me an idea, though. And a few years later, that idea became a political identity that has shaped my entire life and formed my theology. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I am a child of God. So I never really came out. I just stopped trying to not be queer. Instead, I tried to be as queer as possible. And this is a trend that continues in my life more than 20 years later. I've often thought about the kids who are like me, the kids who think they're just weird and need someone to give them permission to be queer out loud. My mom didn't know it or even mean to, definitely didn't mean to. <laughs> But that's what she did for me with her non-neutral question, are you gay? If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I'm a child of God. A few, a few years ago, a queer activist named Alexander Leon said that queer people don't grow up as ourselves. We grow up playing a version of ourselves that sacrifices authenticity to minimize humiliation and prejudice. The massive task of our adult lives is to unpick which parts of ourselves are truly us and which parts we've created to protect us. In other communities and communities of uh, neurodivergence, they often refer to something similar and they call it masking. Developing masks to hide these parts of ourselves and pretend that we are quote unquote normal. These are the parts of ourselves that are truly us that we're hiding, but we don't know how to pull apart the truly us, the parts we've created. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I am a child of God. I need to say something specifically to my queer beloveds. In this time of, of that is trying our souls when our rights feel on a precipice and a, we're staring into an abyss essentially sometimes and there are states in this country where getting a child life-saving gender-affirming health care is seen as child abuse and is legislated as child abuse i need you to know that you are sacred all of you your love is sacred your gender is sacred the sex you have or don't have is sacred. There is nothing wrong about you. You are a child of God and you are as holy as you are queer. In fact, your authentic queerness may be the holiest part of you. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I am a child of God.
And when I tell you that I'm a child of God, I want to be clear what I mean when I say God. I do not believe in a God entity. God, if anything, is a verb. My relationship to that verb of God is one of tumult at times, of chaos, of misunderstanding, of confusion, because I struggle with my own humanity and the humanity of others. As the saying goes, I'm all for the first principle until I leave my house. God is the air we breathe in community. And sometimes that air can be stifling. But when that air is clear and fresh and sweet, it is the very essence of justice, the very essence of love. That presence of God, that air we breathe in community, it's in the room when your board meets, working hard to guide the business of your congregation. The pastoral care team that you have, the people doing pastoral care, they bring that presence of God to you when they're doing care work in your community. Especially now during a time when our needs for care have been deep and broad. I'm sure that that happens for your stewardship team doing their best to raise funding during a time of uncertainty. And I feel God right now, right here with you, this congregation of people I've never met. God is present in the spaces between us. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I am a child of God. So back to that idea that Unitarian Universalism is inherently queer. Early in the history of American Unitarianism, the term Unitarian was reclaimed for being a word synonymous with heretic. And heretic is really another term for being outside the norm, being outside the, or in opposition to the status quo. Our forefather, William Ellery Channing said, quote, we believe that there is one God and one only. We object to the doctrine of the Trinity that it subverts, in effect, the unity of God, end quote. He also said, we believe too that God is just, but we never forget that his justice dwells in the same mind and acts in harmony with perfect benevolence. God's justice has for its goal the highest virtue of the creation, end quote. Queerness is resistance and protestation of the status quo. The Reverend Jackie Lewis, writing about the rapper Lil Nas X in Harper's Bazaar, said, quote, the queer theologian Marcella Altus Reed astutely noted, all theology is sexual. I agree. And the theology that refuses to name queer sexuality is holy and blessed particularly after centuries of God talk that called it anathema, needs to be called into question. I believe the God who makes us all awesomely and wonderfully in her image created our sexuality as well, as a gift to be celebrated, as unique as our fingerprints. Our sexualities, genders, ethnicities, all these identities honor the complexity and beauty of God. When we see each other, when we acknowledge the divinity embedded in each body, we know more about the holy mystery that is God. We know more about the stunning diversity that is the human family." End quote. Uh, Reverend Jackie Lewis is a Christian theologian, as an aside. I share these two works side by side because they're both emblematic of what it means to me to queer theology. In this sense, queer is a verb, much like God is a verb to me. Queer is not just who I am, it is also what I do. God is not an entity, God is how I show up. I queer worship, I queer theology when I bring those in the margins into the center because that is centering justice and equity and love. It is the God who exists in the spaces between us. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I am a child of God. 
queers, perhaps the ultimate heretics, were never meant to survive, which is what we learned from Audre Lorde's beautiful litany. But we do, we do survive. We persist regardless of the hate and the plagues because we mean to. I am religious because I mean to be. I have faith in you. Faith for some is about not knowing and trusting anyway. My faith, however, is about knowing. I have faith because I see you here and I bet you come back week after week in spite of getting pissed off or left out or being confused. I have faith in actual people and in the God that exists between us when we gather. Unitarian Universalism is a faith of choice. We choose this faith. We consent to this faith. And that is the faith we need right now in the shadow of Supreme Court decisions that undermine our fundamental rights to bodily autonomy. It is the faith in the stalwartness of community that will be our salvation. I'm gonna say that one again. It is the faith in the stalwartness of community that will be our salvation. We need salvation and we bring it to ourselves. Now is the time for us to look around and to decide what it is that we are willing to do to resist tyranny together. I give you that assignment. Decide what it is that you will do to resist tyranny. I have faith in you. I will continue to have that faith in you. And if anybody asks you who I am, Please tell them, I am a child of God, and I will remember that so are you. Blessed be, and amen.